Hello and welcome back to I'll Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Maury of Drea Renee Knits and this is my little weekly podcast where I try my best to answer some of your questions that you've sent in, typically about knitting, but sometimes we wander off into some spinning, even a little sewing, although I'm no expert there. And someday we'll get back to some weaving. I have to admit there is no weaving on my loom right now. I had such big plans. <laughs> to get my loom dressed and it just sadly is sitting there naked. So I've got to make time for that soon. But today I am wearing my big cozy Cardi. Last week we had a question about this Cardi and I was like, why am I not wearing that? So today I am. And I'm also wearing my favorite sports cap with my favorite sport. This hat is from Deegan. I'm pretty sure it's actually wool too, which is just makes it even better. Uh, but let's jump into some questions. So, oh yes, yarn for this. This is Farmer's Daughter Fibers Surrey, which is called Odang. And this is Brooklyn General Stores House Yarn. What is it called? Oh man. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna forget the name of the actual, oh, it's like on the tip of my tongue. Isn't that just the worst where you're like, I know it. I've been doing crosswords to keep my brain sharp. I don't know if that's a thing, but I feel like it is like needing to do that word recall because it drives me nuts when I can't remember something. I am cheating here so that I can tell you Skydance. That's the name of this yarn. It's Skydance. So I cheated a little, but I've been trying to not look things up and be like, got to keep that brain working. So, all right. Anyways, let's get to some questions. So this is from a knitter who knits very loosely. I am a very loose continental knitter and often have to go down two to three sizes to meet gauge. I often find that when I start to knit the actual garment, I'm even looser than my swatch and I'm still not meeting gauge. So all my sweaters have been too big. I'm sorry, I know that is so frustrating. Uh, for example, if gauge is five stitches per inch, I'm knitting at four stitches per inch. I was wondering if using a thicker or thinner yarn weight would have any effect on my gauge as well as going down in needle size. Like if the pattern calls for DK, I use a fingering weight instead to meet gauge. Um, so here's what I would think about with that is going down to a thinner yarn is gonna create a different fabric. And that's gonna affect the overall look of your garment. So sometimes that might be fine. I mean, the only way to really know is by swatching and playing around and seeing, do you like that fabric? Are you getting the correct dimensions in your gauge, stitch and row wise, so that you know you're going to achieve the right dimensions? Um, in the finished project. But really just seeing do you like that fabric is going to be kind of a big thing there. So definitely try it and experiment. Just know that you're probably going to have a different fabric than what was intended for the pattern. Um, I honestly, the first thing I thought of when I read that question was I would really recommend trying out English style knitting because I, I think it would probably fix that issue for you. I think it would tighten you up. I had a really good friend, I've mentioned this on here before, I had a really good friend who like she could never knit socks because there wasn't a needle size small enough for her to achieve gauge because she knit so loosely continental. So when she switched to English, fixed everything. So I would just maybe play around with that idea um, so that you're not having to work so hard to knit the pattern the way it's written. Um, so that's actually where I would start, but definitely play around because maybe you playing around with the yarn weight and your needle gauge might get you to where you wanna be without having to learn a new style of knitting, but I would try out both. Next question. I've only been a newsletter subscriber for a few months. I was wondering if there is somewhere I can view past issues to see the features and tips. 
but especially the extras like book recommendations and recipes, etc. You have led me to some interesting discoveries. Yay! And I'm curious as what I missed from earlier newsletters. I'm sure they are just as inspiring as the current content. Uh, thank you so much. So if you are not a newsletter subscriber, I end every issue with a thought you might like section. And it usually always involves a recipe because if I'm not knitting or hanging out with my family, usually even when I am hanging out with my family, you're going to find me in the kitchen. I'm generally cooking and or reading a cookbook or something that has to do with food because that was my other big true love besides knitting has always been baking and cooking and being in the kitchen. So I always pretty much include recipes, especially after being diagnosed with celiac. I love when I find a really good gluten-free recipe that I can count on and that my family enjoys. So I love to share those uh, when I find them. And otherwise, I'll just include things I like, uh, like fun little hats or just random, like sometimes books I'm reading, um, sometimes a poem. I mean, it's all over the place. It can be anything. But anyways, if that is what they're referring to, and if that sounds like something you would enjoy, then I recommend signing up for my newsletter. You can find a link down below. But let's get back to the question at hand, which was past issues. So you can view some of them. I did realize that you can't view all of them. Unfortunately, that is not an option. Um, I don't know why they only let you go back so far. But if you click on any of the issues you have received since you signed up, at the top it says view in web browser. Click that and it's going to open that newsletter up just in another tab of your internet browser. And then if you look over to the left hand side, it says something along the lines of past issues and you just click that and it'll drop them down and you can open whatever's there. Um, so there you go. That is how you can check out some more issues that you may have missed before you signed up. All right. Oh, I love this question. Okay. I have a question about measuring our bodies to figure out sizing for handmaids. Usually a knitting pattern will provide a full bust measurement for a finished sweater. I recently noticed that my full bust measurement differs depending on if I wear a bra or not. Um, 38 inches with a bra, 41 without, which totally makes sense because for those of us with breasts, we when we're wearing a bra, things are generally lifted up a bit and it's going to make the fullest part of our bust, it's, it's pushing that all up into one area. Um, sorry, I was just making sure I'm reading this right. Um, although that's interesting that, I was just thinking about that backwards. 41 without a bra, 38 with a bra. I would think it would be the opposite. I would think that when you push, I guess it depends on your bra. Like I generally, I tend to wear sports bras all the time. I just find them to be the most comfortable. I like security. Um, so in that case, there's gonna be some flattening that's gonna happen, which maybe this knitter has the same taste in <laughs> bra wear, um, in which case it would flatten a bit with that bra creating the smaller full bust. Um, but otherwise I could also see the opposite being true where, um, especially if you are a fuller chested person that without a bra, oh, it just really depends if you're measuring in the same exact spot. This actually is all gonna be a mute point. So I'm gonna keep going with the question and actually get to the point I wanna make. Uh, is this ever talked about? I'm now a little confused what my reference point should be. 38 inches or 41 inches? The middle of those two? Or do I simply get an idea of how I like a sweater to fit my body, taking positive ease into account? I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so hopefully I didn't confuse you with my thoughts because I tend to think out loud and I was just kind of doing that right now. But at the end of the day, what is important is to measure your bust wearing whatever you would typically wear under the garment you're making. So for me, I, the, I'm always going to wear my most worn bra, especially if I wear that under my sweaters when I'm taking my measurements, because that's going to be give me the truest idea 
of what my circumference is going to be under the sweater I'm trying to knit. So I hope that makes sense. So just to like recap it again, wear whatever you will be wearing under that sweater when you measure. So let's say for me, I always wear these little tank tops. So I'm, I am, and I literally am wearing a sports bra right now. So I'm gonna wear my sports bra, I'm gonna wear my little tank top and that, and I'm gonna measure over the fullest part of my bust. And that is the measurement I am going to use to then reference the pattern and go, okay, does this pattern have positive or negative V's? What's recommended? What works best with my personal style? What do, how do I like my sweaters to fit? And that's how I'm going to end up picking my size. So, and it work. it's the same. I've always seen that same tip for sewing and everything is where the undergarments you plan to wear under whatever you're making when you take those measurements. All right, I have a question regarding the Weekender. I am using a mill dyed yarn. All yarn is from the same batch as indicated on the label. Can I knit the whole skein or should I intermingle like we do for hand dyed yarns? I am thinking I carry the yarn on the knit side of my work as the purl side will be worn facing the outside once completed. So, if it's a mill dyed yarn and it is all the same batch, I really doubt you're gonna need to alternate those skeins. So that's what she's describing here, which basically you're just striping. So even though you're not trying to put purposeful stripes in your sweater, it's the same exact idea. When we are using, we talked about this a little bit last week, there was a knitter who had knit pink fizz, they used a cream colored yarn, and it wasn't until it was completely done and they were going to go take photos that they realized that there was a discrepancy in their skeins and they could see it. They could see the change in color from one skein to the next. So to avoid things like that, especially in hand dyed yarns, a lot of people will alternate their yarn. So they'll take two skeins and they'll work from um, the alternate which skein they're working from like every other row or round or maybe they'll do a couple. Um, so that is what this knitter is referencing and that's just called alternating skeins. I think unless, personally, I am real lazy when it comes to alternating skeins. I don't like doing it. Like if I am going to stripe, it's going to be because I want stripes. <laughs> But that's just me. Um, I definitely think that there are times when it's worth it. I also chatted last week when I did have the same thing happen as that other knitter. I didn't realize till after that there was a huge change in one of the skeins I got. Um, it was like dark gray, light gray, dark gray. So it was not a great look at the end of that sweater. So I do think that alternating skeins has its place. It's just not something I want to have to do. Uh, so unless it's necessary, I probably wouldn't. So I would check out your skeins, lay them all out. I also would recommend, because it can be really hard, like just in the skeins, they might look really similar. So what I would actually do is open up each skein and kind of zhuzh them open and lay them next to each other so you can really see, okay, does that this look nice and cohesive? You could even take a picture. I find sometimes cameras pick it up a little bit more than just our naked eye. So that's another idea too, um, is to look at, look at it that way. But unless you do see a discrepancy there, I personally would not bother with alternating skeins, but you do you. <laughs> if it's what would make you feel most comfortable, then go ahead and do it. And if you do choose to do it, then yes, you absolutely wanna make sure you carry the yarns up the knit side since the pearl side will be what is shown to the world. Just remember, it's gonna be the opposite on the sleeves. So the Weekender has a reverse stockinette body, meaning pearl side is showing to the world, but the sleeves are regular stockinette, so the knit side is what's shown to the world. So just keep that in mind. All right, we are all ready. I feel like I'm just like going. All right, question, last question, question five, which is totally made me giggle because it had a title. <laughs> the Mysterious Shortening Sleeves. Dear Andrea, um, da, da, da. my question is, I have knitted my partner five jumpers already and he likes them and wears them all winter. However, as he wear them, as he wears them, the sleeves tend to shorten a lot. 
so much that I had to add some extra length to them. Luckily, I always knit them top down. The last time I elongated one of the jumper sleeves, I realized I had already elongated them once before. What on earth happened? It is not a problem of washing and blocking. The sleeves are fine when he wears them in the beginning, and I don't have the same issue with my jumpers. My only explanation is that he wants the jumpers to be quite fitted, and this could be affecting the length over time. Is this a thing that's happened to you, or do you know other knitters have had a similar issue? So I have not heard this one before, but I just love, it just makes me giggle, the mysterious shortening sleeves. What I think it is, is a lot of times, and I think maybe some other people have had this happen before, when you knit a sweater and the sleeves fit perfectly, and then you block it, and then the sleeves are really long. And I think what tends to happen is our sleeves, when they are waterlogged and things like that, it's really easy to pull them and create length. When we do that, they narrow. And so I have a feeling that because your partner likes those more fitted sleeves, what happens is when you block it and he first tries it on, it feels great. But if they are a little bit more fitted and maybe his, mus his, his muscles, his arms, his biceps, whatever, are slightly stretching them horizontally, as that sweater sleeve stretches this way, the length of them goes this way. So I would just have a rule that you always knit his sleeves longer. <laughs> I would just start adding those couple extra centimeters or inches right out the gate um, because that's the only thing I could think of is, is that has to be what's happening because we wash them, they have a tendency to be a little stretched vertically and then as he wears them and they're stretching widthwise, then they're shrinking up over time. And I think what's happening is the true gauge ends up showing itself. So a lot of times, I, with so many knits all the time, I find that they settle into themselves as we wear them. So at first, which is also why I think like never judge a knit right out the gate because it just, it needs time to like relax. And especially sweaters, I feel like over time they kind of mold to our bodies and they become their true selves. So I think what yours is showing you is that your row gauge may in truth be a little shorter than what you originally thought from your swatch or when knitting. And over time as it's being worn, that sweater is just relaxing into itself and that row gauge is shortening up. Um, so I would always just when in doubt, add some length to those sleeves for him. Thankfully, it does seem to just be the sleeves. You didn't really mention it being an issue in the body of the sweater. So at least it is a pretty easy thing to fix since you knit them top down. Um, but yeah, that's what came to mind for me. I would love to hear if anybody else has had a case of mysterious shortening sleeves, uh, because this is the first time I've heard of that, but I bet you're not alone. So, all right. I think that's everything. It is. So again, I have got my big DRK March to May knit along going on right now. You can find links below to the Ravelry forums and to the Instagram hashtag we're using. You can join in with any of my sweater or shawl patterns, including works in progress that you already had cast on before the knit along began that are still welcome. There are some great prizes. Um, we've got prizes from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers, Ritual Dyes, Spin Cycle Yarns, Brooklyn Tweed, A Wing and a Prayer Farm, Paradise Island, which has an amazing knitting bag. I think that's everybody. I don't want to forget anybody. I think that's it. I think there were six. Um, but there's more than six prizes because some people offered up more than one. So we have got some great prizes in there and you don't have to sign up or anything like that. You can just head to the links below or use the hashtag on Instagram, but it's a really great way to make friends and to meet people in the knitting community. A few weeks ago, I think it was about three weeks ago now, we chatted about making friends and making friends with other knitters and Making friends as an adult, which just I think can be difficult, especially as a very shy introvert. Um, but 
a knit along is one of the ways I made one of my very best friends um, as an adult. And we actually lived on other sides of the country and ended up meeting in real life and we had collaboration together. And um, I just think it's a really great way to come together with other knitters. So I hope you'll join us. And I am slowly easing back into work. I won't officially be back back until probably the end of this month. Um, but we've got the knit along going. I have patterns in the works. I will hopefully be releasing a new cowl coming up here in just like a week or two. I should go look at my calendar, <laughs> be on top of that one. And I even have a new sweater coming out next month in April that I am super stoked about. I'm really excited with how it turned out. It was very experimental and very scary <laughs> with, I just didn't, it was one of those ones where I didn't know if it was going to fit right until it was done and totally blocked. And so the whole time I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, um, but I'm really excited with how it turned out. So everything's in testing and on its way, and I can't wait to share them with you, and I just can't wait to be back. Um, but it's been so great being able to stay connected with y'all here on YouTube, and yeah, I hope that you have a great weekend. I hope you get to make something, whether it's in the kitchen, on your needles, at your wheel, or just making memories with people you love. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I hope to see you back here next week. You can always feel free to subscribe if you want to make sure to not miss any episodes and I'll see you soon. Happy knitting!